This is director Steven Spielberg, whose most recent motion picture, Jaws, is already a legend. Now, Spielberg has turned his attention from the seas to the skies for his latest project, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Among the locations, Bombay, India, Devil's Tower, Wyoming, and Mobile, Alabama, where a gigantic structure has been even further enlarged and converted into a shooting stage, bigger by far than any available even in Hollywood. This is the set for the climactic scenes of one of the most unusual films ever made. Spielberg's newest picture begins with the sighting of an unidentified flying object. Aries 31 has traffic two o'clock, slightly above and descending. Aries 31, can you say aircraft type? Uh, negative center, uh, no distinct outline. Wait a second. Stand by one. Okay, center. Aries 31, the traffic is turned. He's heading right for my windshield. We're turning right immediately and leaving flat level 350 now. Aries 31, descend and maintain flat level 310. Great, Gallagher, triple four, turn right 30 degrees. Get on the heart of the 45th traffic recall. Traffic the the way. See what the hell they could be testing up there. The traffic is approaching head on, ultra right, and really moving. And right by us, right now. Aston, do you want to report a safe UWA 517, do you want to report a UFO? Over? EWA 517, do you want to report a UFO? Over. Joining Spielberg in this project are a number of remarkable people. The producers, Julia Phillips and Michael Phillips. Producers of The Sting and Taxi Driver. Douglas Trumbull is well known for the visual effects in the Andromeda strain. Silent Running, which he also directed, and 2001, right. A Space Odyssey. For the music, there was only one choice. 11-time Academy Award nominee, John Williams, composer of the scores of Jaws and Star Wars. The technical advisor is the world's foremost authority on unidentified flying objects, Dr. J. Allen Hynek, astronomer at Northwestern University. Heading the cast is Richard Dreyfuss, who has shown his exceptional talent in such diverse films as American Graffiti, The Apprenticeship of Duty Kravitz, and Jaws. In addition, making his American debut as an actor is the great French writer-director Francois Truffaut, winner of the 1974 Academy Award for Day for Night. The American title of the picture, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, refers to an intriguing possibility. Well, a close encounter of the first kind is one is close, but nothing really happened. A close encounter of the first kind is visible contact with a UFO. Forget the shape and forget how fast it's going. It's something that you just can't explain. A close encounter of the second kind are those which leave a physical trace. Holes in the ground, fern rings, broken tree branches, telephone lines down, animals disturbed, the stopping of car engines. Then the close encounters of the third kind are the most interesting of all. A close encounter of the third kind is really when you meet them. Spielberg, who is both director and writer of the film, has spent four years on its creation. He doesn't even turn the third time. When he finished his first draft, I read it in one sitting and called him and I said, this is the best screenplay I've ever read. It took about six months for me to pummel him into giving me the role. They all pop one at a time, go faster. They get a little angry. I don't know anybody else personally that I've worked with who can create the kind of excitement on film that he can. Action, JB. When Steven Spielberg made Jaws, the world went shark crazy. Reports of shark attacks increased by the thousands, and people began to approach the beach with caution and even with fear. Now, with close encounters of the third kind, Spielberg is making a film about an even more fascinating subject. And one thing seems certain, 
just as Jaws gave us a new respect for the mysteries that lie beneath the surface of the sea. After seeing close encounters of the third kind, we will probably never look at the sky in quite the same way again. Like Jaws, Steven Spielberg's newest film begins in a small American town, but this time it leads to one inescapable conclusion. We are not alone.